Hey, I'm David Hulka. Thank you for watching my video. We'll get into the actual video here in a, in a minute, uh, but this is a little bit of a, of a different format from what, I, from what you might be used to if you watch any of my videos in the past. Uh, today we're talking about Mexico City, and I was in Mexico City for five days. I went down there to, uh, to immerse myself in the culture, the language, uh, the food, of course. I've taken about 350 consecutive days of uh, Spanish on Duolingo and I figured honestly I could learn more in five days in actual Mexico City rather than uh, on an app. So that's what I was going down there for and uh, lo siento Mexico, I'm sorry, I didn't really like Mexico City and I'm a happy positive person. I've never been any place where I'm ready to leave after two days, two or three days and uh, ready to come back home and just counting the days until I can come back home. And that's the way I felt in Mexico City. Now that's not to say that there weren't positive things. I wanna tell you both the positive and the negative of Mexico City. Um, let's go ahead and start with some of the positives. Um, it's very cheap. As an American, it is very cheap. I mean, th uh, a meal for three, including tip, is $21. The subway is 30 cents, 35 cents every time you go for a ride. Uh, I felt the subway was pretty easy to use. There are certainly some beautiful spaces, but here's the thing. It's like right next to these beautiful uh, parks with, you know, green trees and everything like that. You know, there'd be buildings that are all graffitied up. There'd be sidewalks that's in disrepair. Uh, one time I went up a, uh, a highway overpass. I hit my head. I was wearing a hat. I, I hit my head on a wire. Luckily, apparently it wasn't an electrical wire. Otherwise, I'd been electrocuted. And as I cross the uh, highway to the other side, there's a gap in the highway or in the overpass. It's literally about six inches wide, straight down 25, 30 feet to the highway. Like you could never get away with that in the United States having uh, you know, a gap, something like that in the middle of a highway overpass. And stuff like that was all over the place. You could hit your head on the, uh, the wires in several different places. I will say that I felt safe pretty much at all times in Mexico City, so it's not a problem there. There's plenty of uh, police officers and uh, security guards all over the place, so I definitely felt safe. One thing I did like was on this, uh, this major avenue called Reforma on Sunday between 8 a.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. They close it down for, uh, for, you know, for pedestrian traffic, so you can go jogging on it, you can ride your bike on it. I thought that was pretty cool. I actually had an Airbnb tour almost that entire time frame. So as much as I wanted to go running on Reforma, I was not able to. And I will say that I had pretty good weather there. It was sunny all the time. Uh, and this was in uh, late April, early May. Um, now talk about some things I did not like. First of all, it is massive. I mean, you go there thinking, maybe comparing it to New York City, because that's the largest city that I've been to, at least here in North America. And, and Mexico puts, Mexico City, puts New York City to shame as far as the size of it. It is huge. Um, the subway takes you just about everywhere, but I mean, it's so big that the subway, you might have to walk a mile to the nearest subway station to, find, to get to the st station and then, uh, you know, walk another mile after you get out to get to your destination. Um, another thing I did not like about Mexico City is I was there, uh, among other days, on, they have like a Labor Day on a Monday. And I took the subway to Chapultepec Park, which is like New York City's Central Park, only bigger, probably twice as big. And it was closed. Like, how do you close an entire city park on a Monday? I mean, you could not get away with that in New York City. This next one is kind of a mixed thing. It's I talk about. I want to talk about the cleanliness of uh, of Mexico City. It's different because shop owners they certainly take a lot of pride in their in their shop. You'll see them out there literally scrubbing the sidewalk uh, in front of their shop. So the shop owners totally take pride in their in their place. Um, there was no trash cans anywhere, anywhere in Mexico City. Not the subway. Not the street. Um, so I, I don't know what you do with your trash around there. Um, and, and yet, you know, there were spots where there was trash some places and then, and then there's spots where, you know, you couldn't find a piece of, you couldn't find a leaf on the ground because they, they go around sweeping the, the, the streets so well and picking up the trash. So there's spots where it's beautifully clean and then there's spots where there's a whole 
bunch of just trash. And I actually one time saw a homeless guy and there's homeless guys everywhere, of course, but there was a homeless guy here uh, digging through the trash. Just the, the, the one time I did see a trash can, this guy is digging through the trash, just throwing it all over the place. I'm like, come on, man, take some pride in where you live. Uh, and like I said, homeless, homelessness obviously is a problem in any major city, but there was a significant amount of it in Mexico City. On both the positive and the negative side, there's obviously tons of things to do in Mexico City. And I did a lot, but I certainly have a lot more things to do. Um, it's very spread out, very spread out. So, I mean, from the Zocalo to Chapultepec, Chapultepec Park to the, uh, the pyramids, which are not in Mexico City, they're outside of Mexico City, but lots of things to do and uh, museums, things like that to do. Uh, but they're not all right next to each other, that's for sure. I did go to the National Museum of Art and you'll see the outside of that, uh, that building in my video. I didn't film anything on the inside, honestly, because it wasn't that impressive. I mean, the National Museum of Art had three Monets. They called it a Monet exhibit. There were three Monets there. Uh, that's, I'm sorry, that's not an exhibit. That's three paintings. Uh, and it was absolutely nothing compared to, say, the, uh, the Met in New York City or the Louvre or the Chicago Institute of Art, uh, Mexico's uh, museum, National Museum of Art is, wasn't that impressive, sorry. Let's talk about the people. Um, you know, 21 million people there, so of course you're gonna feel like a bit of a number there. Now, when I went to the hotels, uh, you know, everybody, all the staff at the hotel, very friendly, always getting a buenos dias and a buenas tardes, a buenas noches, everybody saying hi to you. Even, even the guests, if you're riding the elevator with a the guest, they'll always be very friendly. Uh, staff and guests were friendly at the hotels, but walking around the city, uh, obviously on the, uh, the subways with the mass of humanity on the subways, you know, you're just one of 21 million people there, so you don't expect to, uh, to make any friends just walking around the city. But on my Airbnb tours, and I did two of them, the, uh, the hosts were friendly and they were very good at uh, facilitating uh, the people who were on the tours to, to get to know each other. Oh, I wanna add one thing, going back to the, uh, the Metro, the subway. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool that the first two cars of the subway are reserved for women and uh, children under 12, so it would keep them safe. That's a good idea. I think New York City should do that. Okay, just a couple more things I wanna say. Um, so, of course, they tell you in Mexico City not to drink the water, don't drink the tap water, and I did not, and I still got a um, bad case of Montezuma's Revenge. I would say my last three days there, and five days after I got back to the United States, I still had Montezuma's Revenge. So, I not only had a head cold when I was down there, and I thought that was because of the pollution, I was coughing a lot, I was coughing up a lot of green phlegm, and coughing so much was actually hurting my neck, uh, but I come back and I actually come back and I actually had a fever. So I actually, I guess I did catch a disease. I'm not sure what that was, but I thought it was just a pollution, but apparently it actually was a disease. And then on top of that, to have stomach problems, uh, it just kind of made the, the entire experience miserable. So, I mean, if you're thinking about going to Mexico City, you know, don't not go because I didn't enjoy it. I'm sure you've probably watched other YouTube videos. Um, but just do your full research, uh, you know, bring obviously some Emodi uh, you know, watch what you eat. I guess I probably got sick by eating some of the street food. And that's the whole reason I went down there was to immerse myself in, in the food, um, the culture and the language. And turns out it got me sick. Uh, regarding the video, uh, at the end of the video, you'll see uh, one of the Airbnb experiences I did. I was not really commentating, commentating on it. I was just uh, filming. Uh, but it's the uh, Lucha Libre wrestling experience, and it was kind of cool. Uh, the wrestling experience probably goes on for three hours. The Airbnb people know that we as Americans are going to get bored with something after three hours, so they got us there probably for an hour and a half of it, and it was cool. Uh, we saw uh, women wrestling, and they didn't know that was going to happen. I mean, yes, it happens, but they, it doesn't happen every, every night that they, that they offer wrestling. We went on a Tuesday night. And I even asked ahead of time, are we gonna see any women wrestling? They're like, they're probably not, but it turns out we did. Um, most of the wrestling is three on three. There was one one-on-one -on -one match. The three on three matches are three falls. So you gotta, somebody's gotta pin one of the other opponents three times. So it's always two out of three. And it, it's not always the good guys that win either, by the way, it's kind of funny. Sometimes they let the bad guys win just cause you know, the good guys always want to be boring, right? So, so I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, 
please, I welcome a discussion. If you uh, disagree with me, that's fine. Um, put something in the comments below, just do, do so respectfully. And if you uh, did or did not like Mexico City, or if you found this video helpful, I appreciate your feedback. And uh, please hit like and subscribe and peace out. Enjoy the video. Hey, I'm David Hulka and welcome to Mexico City. This is the Angel of the Independence. This is a solo trip for me to Mexico City. This was Saturday night and I'm just walking from my hotel, which is a Holiday Inn in Zona Reforma. I'm just walking through a local park here on my way to find some dinner. Just wanted to show all the uh, the locals selling their their wares and also note that I felt perfectly safe here in Mexico City. And this stuff looked amazing. Night one here in Mexico City. I'm eating at Pollos Ponchos on El Vero Obregón. It's a major street here in Mexico City. Here are my tacos. They came out very quickly. Uh, they each came to about $2 American. Now let's try them. Very good. This is why I'm here for the food. Again, here just showing the nightlife on a Saturday night. Lots of people out and about. Check out this guy flexing for me right here. I've seen this place in other videos about Mexico City. It's like this cool bookstore slash cafe thing going on here. This is the fourth level of the bookstore, quite the happening place at 8 o'clock at night. It's Sunday morning here in Mexico City, about 7.40 a.m. And as I understand it, they closed some of these streets. Now there is some light traffic on them right now. Maybe they closed them soon. But look at all the runners and there's tons of bicyclists. And just people getting exercise right here in the street. This is Mercado Martinez de la Torre. It's still only 8.18 a.m. here on Sunday. So uh, this massive market is kind of just now opening. <laughs> All pineapples. Watermelons on this side. It's like Pike Peak Fish Market in uh, Seattle, just throwing chickens. met up with Olin, our tour guide, just a few minutes ago. We had uh, breakfast at a place, and now he's taking us through this market. Candy, fresh food, souvenirs. Chicken. No, 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 it's okay. 
I'm trying the taco without any salsa. We'll see how this goes. Tasty. I think I'll add some salsa to it. Okay, so Olin taught us how to use the subway, and I found it relatively easy. Uh, first of all, I thought it was funny they call it the uh, the orange limousine. Uh, it's pretty much always crowded. It costs you about a dollar for the card the first time and 30 to 35 cents, basically five pesos every time you use it after that. Um, the yeah, the uh, pink line, La Linea Uno, line one, is closed west of um, Balderas, and your, your phone, your Apple iMap phone does not tell you that. This is Plaza de la Republica, and this is the Revolution uh, Monument, which Olin is about to tell us about. Let's take a look all the way around here. This is Olin right here. Pension de... No, no, no. Economical support from the fathers. From the fathers. Look at that beautiful building over there. We're going to go in here on our Airbnb tour and have a bunch of drinks. So, so it looks amazing. Tasty. Now you have to take a look at some of this. In your, in your cup, please try the plain one. No flavor, no color. That's the full case straight from the back. Let's see what you think. Okay, Olin wants us to guess the ingredients of the, uh, the green one here. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Get it from the gym after yeah. the workout. Like a juice. Yeah. Like the, yeah. Obviously, the taste of it. Selling more Funko Pops. And everything else you ever wanted. Espados. Why are Funko Pops so popular? Like, there's several places selling them. That's crazy. Dance lessons. You know, I love dancing. This is Alameda Park. I don't know why the fountains keep going on and off. This is the Palacio de Bellas Artes. This is the number one thing I wish I had done, was gotten inside La Palacia de Bellas Artes there. Beautiful building. So you may have heard how Mexico City is sinking. Now look at these two buildings right here. You see this gap between the two buildings? It gets bigger the higher up you go. This building on the left, it's 100 years old and it's sinking down to the left there. So it's kind of a dramatic example of it here. This, believe it or not, is the post office. They call it the Postal Palace. Another absolutely gorgeous building. And this is the outside of it. This is the National Museum of Art. It actually has a Monet exhibit in it right now. It's free today, which means there's a big long line on it. Uh, it'll be closed tomorrow, Monday. Uh, and then Tuesday, Olin says there'll be no line there whatsoever, so. But you'll have to pay on Tuesday. This is my tour mate, Chris. Hey. How is it? Uh, I'm about to try. I'll let you know right now. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so hungry. So. What's the verdict? This is delicious. <laughs> I'm allowed it now. Just had this street food and it was really good. These are the archaeological ruins right outside of El Zocolo. And uh, you can take the elevator to this terrace here in this cafe for free. It doesn't cost anything. Get this really cool view. This right here is the cathedral, which I'll videotape from the front side. Do you know what I find the most amazing thing about all these archaeological ruins? This stuff was discovered in my lifetime, 1978. They didn't know it was here. It was all under buildings and some electrical workers digging in a basement found, I think, that thing right there, or at least a replica of that thing right there. Or this is a replica. They found the original. 
So they tore down whatever building was here and uh, uncovered all these ruins. So who knows what's underneath all these other buildings around here. Cathedral Metropolitano, largest cathedral in all of North America. This place is massive. There seems to be several different parts to it. literally called the Boys and Girls Festival. Musical chairs, effectively. On my long walk back, because the subway was closed, um, I stumbled upon Mercado del San Juan here, which I heard about before I came here. You guys think of seeing markets yet? You seen one market, you seen them all? I don't know, maybe. This stuff looks amazing, but I just got ice cream at uh, San Juan Market. Okay, this is Parque Balderas, six tenths of a mile from my Holiday Inn on the way back. Centro Historico. So many places selling hot wheels and the like. It's funny. They got them there. Legos, Barbies. Check out this building. Water falling on it from probably eight floors up. Never have to wash the windows, they're always clean. Day three here in Mexico City. And uh, this is the area, the neighborhood known as Condesa. Specifically, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody has been here or lives here, this is the Hippodroma area, but I believe that's a part of Condesa. The larger area is Condesa. This area specifically is known as Hippodroma, which I believe means horse track. Anyway, uh, if I sound funny, it's because I'm sick been coughing up along and uh, finally got some medicine at a uh, pharmacy here. It's very nice, this neighborhood. Hola, it's Wednesday, my last day in Mexico City. I leave tomorrow, I'm back in the Zocalo here, City Square. I was here on Sunday, which was my first full day here. 
and it was so crowded and loud. I mean, there was a million people in the square. This is the cathedral behind me. Check out the size of that Mexican flag. I wish there was a little wind to blow it, but uh, did you know that Mexico City is the largest or most populated Spanish-speaking uh, city in the entire world? And secondly, it's the largest city in the entire Western Hemisphere. Hard to believe, isn't it?